the application's progressing nicely now, and we have this print action view all working. But what I've had is a few requests on the last several videos of people wanting a bit more explanation as to how all of these view models are just working and the UI is updating. We've covered the page view models, the view model base, and ultimately using the community MVVM framework to do all of this view model binding. So we know in theory how things bind together, but I think what you're missing or what a lot of viewers are missing is how specifically is all this working? How is this observable property working and what's going on? So I thought we'd just stop and do a quick dedicated video on explaining how view models work. We'll make our own view model and show you from the ground up how it works and link in with the main window. And let's just do some view model work directly without using any libraries so you can understand how this works. Because we have a working application, what we first need to do is let's just get rid of this view here. So let's just comment it out. And let's just put say a label in first with some content. And we need to bind to something. So because we want to make it from scratch, we're going to make a new class and just call it a uh, I don't know, my view model. Why not? We're not going to inherit from anything at the minute. And then we're just going to have a public string my string. So let's keep this nice and simple. This can be set to this is a string. And let's now bind that to here. In order to do that, we'll go into the app, the code behind, and just for here, where we'd normally inject it for now, we'll just make a new my view model. So we're just going back to the basics. We're ignoring all of the dependency injection. We're just creating up a new view model. This view model is just a class with nothing in it at the minute, so there's absolutely no magic going on. We're dumping that into this view. We'll change the data context to match as well, so we can do some binding. So we'll just copy and paste that and change that to my view model. So now the data context should be aware in here. If we do binding and we do my string, and up here we don't have any data context yet or data type. So we'll do a data type of VM my view model. And now you can see the string should be bound. And there's the string. So this is a string. So you might be asking now then, why do the view model classes need this observable object? And the issue comes in when we start to change the data. So let's just create a constructor and simulate something happening. And here we'll do a new task.run. We'll do an async. And this is just going to spin off a new thread. Then we'll await for, say, three seconds. So we'll do a three second delay. And after this, we're going to change my string. And this is simulating data changing by whatever the application wants to do with it new string info and if we now run that it will automatically run in here because the constructor will run in the designer and if we wait three seconds you can see nothing's happened it hasn't updated and this is where the mvvm side of the view model stuff comes in the way that the view will work is it will listen when we bind here to this property so we press f12 it's going to listen inside of the class for something called I notify property changed. It's going to expect something to be fired to let it know when it needs to re-get this information. So if we wanted to make a view model ourselves without any library, you can just inherit from the I notify property changed. And this is an interface. And if we F12 into the interface, you can see it just simply has one event called property changed. If we control and dot to implement that, it's done all the work for us. It's made a property changed event handler. So the view can now hook into this event. We have a function called on property change, which is what fires when the property changes. And we have a set field. We can delete the set field for now. The property change is just going to fire the event. So the way this would work now is the view would go, say, inside of here. Let's pretend this is a view. The view would, say, have the data context. And this data context will be the thing we bound, which would have been one of these views. And then what the view can do now is inside the data context, it can hook into the property changed and do this. So it could listen out now for every time when a property changed. So we'll leave this in here to pretend this is also a view and do something with this after. And what we need to do is after the delay or every time this changes, we need to tell the view something's changed. So we could ignore this for the moment. And let's make this now work with a view model. So all we'd have to do after we've set the property is to do 
on this class, we want to call this on property changed. So we go in here on property changed, and we now need to fire off the property name. And what you can see here is it's expecting a property name, and it's going to automatically, if we don't pass a value in, use the caller member name. Well, this hasn't got a caller member name because it's not a property as such. So we want to specify my string as the thing that's changed. So we just did my string like this. This will now work in the view. So that's the only change we've done. We've fired this event off for property changed. And the view is going to automatically bind to that. So if we compile and we watch this, in three seconds that should update. And there you go, new string info. So all's, most, well, not all, but 90% of what view models is about is simply a view listening out for this property changed event. So it knows then to go and ask for the getter inside of here after three seconds to do something. If you wanted to see that when you're debugging, we could break these out and do the full property. So you could do a private string underscore my string. The getter here could then return my string. And the setter could do what it normally would do, which would be to set the value. Remove that and put it to here. And what they normally have in here as well is if my string equals the value you return. So you're not going in an infinite loop of setting. Then you set the value. And now what we can do is we can debug into here. And if we run the application, you'll see this will run first when the string is set on the constructor. So you can see there, this is a string gets fetched. We have awaited three seconds. Now we want to update the string to new string info. And you can see then it's fired off the getter. And the thing that's fired this off is the view. And you can see it's just linked into the, ultimately the thread that's running the UI is the thing that's now asked for this to update. So that was the view after we called this firing to get the string again. And that's how it's all working. If we wanted to see that in action as well, we can uncomment our code. This could pretend to be like similar to the view. And we could hook into this and bear in mind, this would have to be instead of a new view model, it could actually be uh, this itself. And then if we did that at the top to make sure we're hooked in, we should be able to do the same thing on this and get fired when the property changes. And it will fire on this change only because it's the only time we're telling it it's changed. And there, three seconds later, we now have the arguments. And in the arguments, you can see we have the property name, my string. And this now tells us in here, if we wanted to, we can go and fetch this property and call the getter. So we could literally do for new value equals Property name or new value equals my string. And the way obviously the view would figure this out is getting the string name here and then reflecting it into the class and calling the property by the string that's passed in. Obviously, you wouldn't be able to do just this, but you get the idea. That's how the view is working. So, if that's how it's working, then how do we get this to automatically work? So, instead of on property name changed here. You could change this instead of to be my string to be name of my string. And the reason for that is if we rename this to something else, my string two, then the name that gets passed into the property change also changes. Whereas if that was just a string, it would lose the binding. But we don't want to have to call property changed every time we set a property. So what we do for that is we can now move that property changed inside of the setter. So every time we change the value, we'll fire off the property changed. Because it's inside of the property with the name, and because of this magic little statement here saying call a member name, we don't even need to pass in the name of this property because by default, it's going to pass in exactly that. It's going to pass in the member call a name, which is already the thing we want. So we can just call it like this. We can rename this back to my string as well now. And if we check this, this should still work. So if we compile, go to the window, wait three seconds. And you can see that still updates. So that's all working. So instead of doing this I notify property changed and having to implement every time you want a single property doing all this code, you imagine doing that now for 10 string variables. You'd have this 10 times. You'd have absolutely tons of all of these and it's a lot of handwritten code instead of just doing this. So what the toolkit does is if you replace I notify property changed with an observable object, we can then delete all of this public one because this is going to automatically generate this for us, this exact code. And the observable property already has this implemented as well. It will automatically do the 
the event that we need. And now what we need to do is because the observable property is a class, we need to tell it this wants to be a public property with all that notify property changed in. We tag it with this observable property. This will now automatically try to generate that public property. And you can see it's complaining because it can't do it. We need to change the class to partial so that it can now automatically generate. And you can see it's generated this public property. If you wanted to see what it did, we can go to the dependencies of the project. .NET 9, source generators. If we expand, you can see we have an observable property generator. And in here, you can see the things it's done. So the one we care about is the MyView model, which is this class. We double click. You can see this is the part of the class it's automatically generating for us. And there's the my string, and you can see it's a public string like we had. The getter will return that property already. The setter will do a bunch of things. It will call a few extra values that we didn't bother calling. It will do a call on changing. Call on changing with the default and the new value. Then it'll say the property is about to change. So all of these things we don't bother doing, but the community framework does. It then sets the property, and it does what we did here on property changed. So it's adding these extra five calls in here that simply help the UI to have more information about it changing. But ultimately, it's done exactly what we did. It's made a getter that returns the private member. It's made a setter that then sets the new value and tells the UI that it's changed. And what it now means is instead of us having to write all of that code we did, it can just be replaced with this. So we now want to do 10 of these. It's just going to be 10 of these strings. It's not going to be a massive mess of extra work. If we compile, we should be able to see that works exactly the same. And three seconds later, it updates. So that's mostly how view models work. There's more things as well. So if we were to do, say, uh, a list, so you'd want to say a public list of string, and you do my string list equals, and then you do a new set of strings. We could bind this to a list. So instead of the label, let's do a stack panel first, put the label inside, and here we'll do an items control with item source set to the binding of my string list. And that should automatically, if we compile, output the list there. So you can see we've got three items in the list. If we were then at the same time going to edit the list, so we could say my string list dot add new item and compile that we should see in three seconds this doesn't update so you can see there now the list hasn't updated and that's because we haven't replaced this property by doing say underscore my string list equals new and made a new list which we could do we could do this to make a new list and that will now be a new list of one item. So if we did this instead, you'll find the view will update because it's the property being replaced. Ah, but we forgot not the underscore. We want the public property, otherwise that event won't fire. Let's do the same on both of them. If we compile, you'll see now this will update with the single item in the list. And there we go. But if we do the adding to the list, so changing the actual list itself, this won't update. So you can see there you don't update the list. And to do that, as well as the iNotify property change, there's also an iNotify collection changed. So if you have any lists of anything or arrays, change the list instead to an observable collection. You can see down here, we have an observable collection now. If we F12 into that, you can see this is then a collection with iNotify collection changed as well as property changed. So it's gonna update every time something gets added to the list. And it does that in much the same way you'd expect. Every time you add something to the list, it's going to call collection changed. So you can look in here for collection changed. And you can see every time you are inserting items, removing items, or adding items, it's going to call this selection changed and let you know everything about it. So it's in the same way as a property, but designed for lists. That will mean now, if we have this new item added and we refresh, the UI should update because it should be aware of the observable object. And there we go. And that's again because the view, as well as looking for observable properties, looks at the property type. And if it's of a type that has the interface iNotify 
collection changed, then it'll also hook into those events. So that's really how the view models work. There's nothing too magical about it. And having this class allows us to implement properties in a very non-view model way, but still have all the benefits of it firing off events in the view and updating for us. Whenever we do the bind in here, the view is looking for those interfaces to hook into, and it simply listens out for the callback events that tell it to update a certain property. So hopefully that clears things up for those that are struggling a little bit with the view models, and it makes a bit more sense now.